Do you know why God's commandments aren't burdensome? Watch 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. It says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. How do you know the love of God is present in your life and active? Well, it's going to come through and shine through your life in the form of obedience to God's commands. Love for God will look like obedience to His commandments, walking in, in pursuit of holiness and righteousness and living in a way that honors Him. And His commandments are not burdensome. Why? Because His commandments lead us into the fullest experience of life and the fullest experience of God's love for us. And His commandments outline what it looks like to effectively love people and live in the best possible relationship with others. So God's commandments aren't burdensome because they're not meant to burden you. They're meant to lead you into a sense of fuller life as you trust in the Messiah for ultimate. Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to deal with a uh, particular response I got to a comment I left on this video. All right. Now, um, we know these Christians, they go into these scriptures, right? And uh, he's bringing out a good scripture, you know, First John 5 and 3. All right. We know that we love God if we obey and keep his commandments. All right. Now, where can the commandments be found? All right. The commandments were given to the Israelites, all right, in the Torah via Moses and Aaron, okay, um, and, um, you know, ultimately we were bound to that first covenant, but ultimately right now we're under a grace period, you know, where we're freed from, you know, bondage to that first covenant, however, the commandments, all right, are still there, the commandments are still holy, all right, and by keeping the commandments to the best of our ability, we give ourselves a good chance and to the best of our ability by rehearsing the righteous acts. All right. We try to be holy, which is separate from this world, which live and promote lawlessness. Now, when you talk to these Christians about the commandments and you go into the commandments, all right, they become grievous unto them to show you that they don't really believe in the Holy scriptures. Okay. The Christian church all right, is responsible for promoting all manner of lawlessness. So on this video, which this is above reproach ministry, which nobody's above, above reproach. On this video, I just left a simple comment. Can we eat swine? Okay. Because um, what they teach is that the commandments are done away with. All right. And now we're just commanded to love. And love has no standard. It has, you know, uh, no action. It's just merely love. And they've run around with this love concept. All right. But when you look at the fruits of the people who subscribe to this religion, you don't see love. OK, because true love is the keeping of the commandments. There is no other way to love. If I love you, I'm not going to commit adultery with your wife. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you. If I love you, I'm not going to murder you which is what that word kill is in the, when you go into it, all right? If I love you, I'm not going to feed you unclean things. If I love myself, all right, I'm not going to eat unclean things. So what they tell you is that love ultimately is, is just a word. But when you go into the Holy Scriptures, love has a standard, as we'll get into. So what I posted it's a simple question. We know this get the Christians going. Can we eat swine? So I got this response. <laughs> and, and here's the here's what they posted. First Timothy's four, one, uh, uh, and then three through five. All right. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in a latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. All right. So are the commandments of the Lord, which we teach to our people, all right? Of course, we're not saved by the law, okay? However, as we're going to read, you know, the, the, we, just because we're under grace doesn't give us uh, uh, the, the go-ahead to just live a sinful lifestyle. And what is sin? Transgression of the law, okay? Clearly, we, there are particular things we can do to show our love 
all right, to the most high and to our people, right? So what they're saying is that teaching our people the commandments is a doctrine of the devil when you take this mindset, all right? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving, all right, of them which believe and know the truth. And if you believe and know the truth, you know and understand what is clean and unclean. Okay, which the heavenly father gave Moses that law, okay, to give to the children of Israel so that they can be separate, all right, from the heathen nations that were round about, okay, and those animals, okay, and those particular things he deemed unclean actually help keep the earth and the ecosystem intact. So when you eat those things, you're eating what cleans the earth. And the Lord told us they were unclean to us. And as he said in this uh, video, the commandments are not grievous. But when you deal with the Christians and you go into the commandments, they are grievous into them. And then they go into the scriptures, misquoting and misrepresenting what particular scriptures are talking about to ultimately fulfill their belly. And to promote sin, which sin is the transgression of the law. Okay, now it says. For every creature of God is good. Now, human beings are creatures, right? Creature just means a living being. All right. Skunks are creatures. Rattlesnakes are creatures. Dolphins are creatures. Okay. Uh, 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 poison ivy is a part of creation. It's a creature. Okay. <laughs> There's various things that are uh, creatures. Cockroaches are creatures. Seals are creatures. Electric eels are creatures. Hippopotamuses are creatures. Komodo dragons are creatures. So now they're teaching you that every creature, this is what they think this scripture is saying, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. So if someone puts a baby foot on your plate with a pig snout, okay, it is not to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. So all I have to do is pray over the baby foot OK. And, 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 and eat the uh, 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 elephant trunk. If I pray over it, because it shouldn't be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer and sanctified means what? Holy. OK, clean. All right. Lawful. Set apart from what is unhallowed or unholy or profane. Okay, so we're going to go into that scripture, but I want to read the uh, response. Okay, because we have to understand how to break these things down when we're approached with these questions, because, uh, you know, with these scriptures. So this is uh, my response. I said, so teaching the commandments is a doctrine of the devil. And that's one question we have to the Christian church is teaching the commandments a doctrine of the devil. So when we go into the commandments and we found out what is what is holy, what is unholy, what is uh, profane, what is clean, teaching those things is a doctrine of the devil. To go into the law and say this is what the Most High deems holy, this is what the Most High deems unclean, is that the doctrine of the devil? Okay, that's the first question. It says, "I can can I eat a skunk, a human, a rattlesnake? Those are creatures." Y'all got to stop. This is speaking of the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church who say men and women in certain positions can't have sex or semen retention as a doctrine and Lent. All right. For Lent, what does the Catholic Church tell you? You, you should abstain from meat. The Lord didn't give that commandment. You can't command people to be a vegan or not to eat meat, which you have those particular doctrines running around. OK, those are the doctrines of the devils. All right. Now, let's go to the scripture real quick and then we'll go back to that. On how to break this down. This is first Timothy's four and one. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days. Or times. Some shall part from the faith, depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what the Christians teaching you is that when you teach the law, statutes and commandments, when you say swine is unclean. That is the doctrine of the devil. 
That is absolutely absurd. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Okay. Forbidding to marry. Okay. Now, when you go into the Catholic Church, okay, the, 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 the Pope, all right, or the church fathers or whatever you call them, okay, the, these, these particular uh, uh, priests, they can't have wives. Okay, they freak off with the little children, but it's a it's a doctrine within that religion that you cannot have a wife. And then you have the nuns who freak off with the children as well. OK. They can't have they can't marry, they can't have husbands. OK, that is the doctrine of the devil. OK, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving. OK. Of them which believe and know the truth. Now, where can we find the truth of the Most High's, all right, uh, 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 authority on what's clean and unclean to eat in the laws? Okay, Leviticus the eleventh chapter, I believe, Deuteronomy the fourteenth chapter. Okay, that's where we can find what's clean to eat and what's unclean to eat. Okay. These Christians will go to any uh, particular scriptures, you know, eating in one unwashed hands and w without any understanding. And they just go to these particular points to say, see, I can eat what the hell I want to eat. All things are clean. No, this is speaking of what? The doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church and the spirit in this world that teach semen retention as a doctrine. Now, are you wrong for uh, uh, practicing semen retention? No. OK, are you wrong if you don't want to deal with a woman or don't want to marry? No, it just cannot be teach or taught as a doctrine. Are you wrong for saying you want to abstain from meats? OK, no, if you don't want to eat meat, you don't have to eat meat. Now, when it comes to particular holy days, you're going to have to eat meat. OK, but you cannot make it a doctrine and say, I'm not eating meat. OK, or we can't eat meat. If you eat meat, it's a sin. When clearly uh, uh, we go into the laws, we go into the, 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 the commandments, we go into the priesthood. Meat was always involved in particular holy days and sacrificial practices. And then they would eat the sacrifices. I mean, it's clear as day. The, the heavenly uh, father's son, Yahweh Shai, when he came onto the earth, we know he ate fish. OK, he celebrated the Passover. He had to eat lamb if he was perfect in the law. He would have had to eat meat if he was perfect in the law. What law was he perfect in? He was perfect in the law that was given unto Moses. OK, he, he celebrated the Passover. He did the, the high holy days. OK, he, he, he did the things that were uh, uh, commanded to do in that law. OK, if something was unclean, according to that law, he didn't eat it. Therefore, he wouldn't have been perfect in that law. So forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. This is speaking of the, the practices of the Roman Catholic Church. And that's a particular spirit in this world. All right. That people try to make doctrines and tie to the Bible. If you don't want to deal with a, a woman or a woman ain't dealing with a man, whatever. That's between you and your how about you, Shai. But when these things become a doctrine. And you try to tie it to the scriptures you can't marry, that's off. And the Roman Catholic Church is completely off. And when you try to teach a doctrine to you, you have to, you can't eat meat, that's off. Okay? But if you fast for meat, if you, you want, I want to take a year off, whatever, you know, that's between you and the Lord. But you know on the holy days you're gonna have, you know, to eat, you know, a little bit of meat. That's just that's commanded, that's in the law. Okay? So that's what that's talking about. They're telling you if you teach our people the law, statutes, and commandments, you're 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 ultimately teaching the doctrine of the devil, which is crazy. Okay. Now let's go to this scripture here. For every creature of God is good. Now re remember, this is speaking to them who believe and know the truth. If you believe and know the truth, a part of the truth, all right, is there. There's a dietary law, right? If you believe and know the truth, you understand what is clean and unclean. OK, for every creature of God is good. Now, human beings are creatures. Now, is that good to eat? I could just go bite Latanya on the arm and take a big chunk out of her or, or, or find some crazy little uh, uh, 
the cult, <laughs> all right, or, or, or faction or, or, or group who produces human meat, okay, and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good to eat this meat because every creature is good. No, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be refused with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God. Now, let's go to this, this, this word sanctified. Sanctified, hagiazo, to render or to acknowledge, all right, or to uh, to be venerable or hollow, to separate from profane things and dedicate it to God. So how can we find out what is holy and profane? We go into the laws, which the law is holy. Romans chapter seven and twelve consecrated things to God, dedicated people to God, to purify, to cleanse externally, to purify by expiation, free from guilt of sin. What is sin? First John 3 and 4. Sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? To purify internally by renew, renewing the soul, to sanctify, to be holy, hallowed. Okay? So, the word of God can be found where? The volume of the book. OK, so there are particular meats that are sanctified by the word of God. And where can we find those things that are sanctified and good to eat by the word of God? All right. Ceremonially, ceremonially clean and unclean animals. OK, it tells you what's good to eat and what's not good to eat. OK, and the earth is suffering because people are eating these particular things that were made to clean the earth. All right. So that's the breakdown. Okay. Of what this, this is talking about. Okay. The word of God gives us what is sanctified. What is holy. What is hallowed. Okay. Like the, the Sabbath day is hallowed. It's set apart. Okay. Hollow means what? Let's go to the, 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 uh, the scripture. Let's see if we can find it. Exodus 20 and 11. For in six days, the Lord have made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in me resting on the seventh day whereof the Lord have blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So when you go to this scripture and you go to this word hallowed, hallowed it is kadash, to consecrate, sanctify, prepare, dedicated, to be hallowed, to be holy, what? To be separate. So there are particular meats separated and hallowed and to be accepted and to be ate. You can't teach a doctrine to say, well, Nah, you can't eat these things. That is the doctrine of the devil. Okay? Not going into the law and showing you what's clean and unclean. That's not the doctrine of the devil. The doctrine of the devil is saying you can't eat meat because clearly in the law, there are particular meats you can eat. There are particular meats that are hollowed. See that? Okay? The doctrine of the devil is saying you can't have sex. Clearly, the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. Clearly, particular men of the Lord had wives. Peter had a wife. Particular disciples had wives. Now, there's particular men of the Lord who didn't deal with women, but that wasn't a law put on them. OK, you can't go into the law and, and, and find a law that says you can't have a wife. Now, if you take particular vows and things like that. OK, there are particular things you can and can't do that are tied to those particular vows. OK, but you can't come to a congregation and teach a doctrine. You can't eat meat or you can't have a wife. Or women can't have a husband. That's the doctrine of the devil. Not going into the law and simply showing you what is holy and profane. That's what we were supposed to do. OK.
Leviticus 10 and 10, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy and clean and unclean. Let's see if we can get some precepts here. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord have spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. To make Leviticus 11 and 47, to make a difference between the clean and unclean and between the the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. They're telling you that going into the law and doing this is the doctrine of the devil when they bring out that scripture in 1 Timothy 4, which is off. Okay. <laughs> Ezekiel 44 and 23, and that they may teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and clean. That's not the doctrine of the devil. So I just wanted to break that down. So, you know, I know we went over this a few times, but the spirit just compelled me to do this lesson, man. Okay, what's sanctified by the word of God is where we can go into the Holy Scriptures and find out what's holy and acceptable to eat and do. Clearly, the scriptures say be fruitful and multiply, right? So sex is not a wicked act. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Clearly in the law, all right, a man could have a wife or wives. Okay, that's in the law. Okay, clearly Jacob had wives. Clearly men and women have gotten together who were uh, great and, and, and very important to our nation and had sex. We can't teach a doctrine that you, you must re retain your semen. Okay, now is it wise in particular situations? Okay, not to deal with these women? Absolutely. Okay, but I can't make that a doctrine. So I just wanted to deal with that. Okay, the, the, as the scriptures say, children are um, the reward of the womb, man. Okay, clearly there's particular people in the latter days that are going to what? Let's get that real quick. In uh, Jeremiah 31. <laughs> so that's what that means, man. Jeremiah 31 and 7. For thus saith the Lord God, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief nations. Publish ye, all right, praise ye and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them. All right, and we're from the we're in the northwestern hemisphere right now, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame and the woman with child, and her that travail it with child together, and a great company shall return. How are they going to have those children in their in their uh, 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 you know wombs? How? Because they're going to have sex with a man. Okay, it's not a wicked act to have sex. It's not a wicked act to eat meat. Those are the doctrines of the devils that are spoken of in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Not going into the law and showing you what is clean and unclean, man. So I just wanted to go into that, man. Shalom.